All right, everybody, welcome back to our second night of the Alpha Trion Tournament. Uh, today, I have my guest and co-host for the evening, Mr. Scott Landis. How are you doing, Scott? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Um, I'm already getting judges because they already can hear me. I am turning it off right now. You guys got me. <laughs> uh, so, oh, no. All right, so there's going to be a middle of a mix-up. You guys are going to have to hear this for a second, and then I'm going to have to set it up, so it's fine. You guys can all hear it. So, <laughs> let's uh, let's get into the stream, um, and what I'm going to need you guys to do for me is let's uh, let's let's break down these uh, these games a little bit here, Scott. So, you have uh, we have Ventric uh, on the right, and we have one in the dark on the left, and we have Ventric playing a horrible Sky Shadow deck, and we have one in the dark playing a Wind Charger Blaster deck. A Sky Shadow deck featuring Horrible, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a, we don't know how we don't know the quality of the deck. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, um, so do you, want, you, do you sold... me to share this to yeah. YouTube to a uh, Facebook also? Yeah. Okay. Keep going, sir. All right. So you um you got to judge last night uh, during the stream. You you got to watch one of the Darks games. Um, so you've already seen this blaster deck in action. Do you, what do you what do you have to say for the blaster decks that you've seen in action so far? Um, so the point of playing with Wind Charger was that on turn one he could get a large attack if he goes first against like um, the mirror type situation. Obviously he has like multiple plus four adders, um, which given flips and all that, you you can potentially get up to thirteen. Is the point mm -hmm. um, to take out Fangry one hit? Is what he told me, but I'm not positive that. Um, uh, it's consistent enough to do that. Uh, he does have some blues in here. He has trip wires, things like that. I actually thought it was interesting. I thought it was one way to get ahead of uh, uh, some of the wider decks was to just basically get more plays. Um, but I, I'm not. You basically need to draw really well in order to compete with like some of the the wider um, tight master decks because like they're just they they just want to be wider than you. And Sky Shadow just gives you such an advantage when you're an Autobot based deck. To like basically start with three damage on one of your guys is like not good. So, um, yeah. So I, I I was looking at the list and I thought it was funny because when Dark sent me the list right away, he's like he's like you have to show this to Vince. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you know I, I know Vince saw it and he was pretty excited to see what he could do with the event. So it'll be it'll be cool to see uh, what this Wind Charger can do. We saw Wind Charger last night on stream and. and it was against the blue deck, so it, it wasn't as powerful. Um, there's a chance that, you know, in this, this orange mirror that we could see something very different, though. Yeah, the main issue, again, is is two defense characters. Like, um, you, you put out... I think the problem with... I think one of the issues with his list is there's just not a, a plethora of direct damage in it. Right. Because um, there, was, there was a lot of opportunities I saw last night where... I mean, in fact, looking at his list, all I see are the the two trip wires. Um, he just, I, I think that's the real problem with the deck is that there's just not, um, there's not any direct damage in the deck. And so like, he has absolutely no chance of like stealing attacks from his opponent. And I think that if he had like a bunch of Kamian crashes and like, even like if he had like five direct damage cards, I think it would be, it would be really powerful. Right. Um, but like missing them, I think we just really hurts his, uh, his ability to win in these aggro, aggro mirrors, especially against Sky Shadow. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to break it down and see what happens. Um, and I'm going to check over with the guys and let them know that we're going to get ready to get started. Okay. It's fine. Are you calling? Oh. 
Weird. Here. Wait, I gotta mute you in now. You sound like the board, so. Yes, I can. And then I saw the horrible deck. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, just pinging people to death, so. Until the uh, hollow hollow matter projectors come out. Hey, Ventric, can you unmute Dan? Sure. All right, you're unmuted. All right. Two D six sound good. Cool. And flip the horrible back to a. Uh... Uh, all right, let's hope that works. Can you, can, if they can hear you, tell them. To... All right, guys, if you can still hear me, make sure Harbles in the correct mode to start the game. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank I'm you. officially muted. They can no longer hear me. Welcome, stream. Here we are. We are. This is. Uh, it's weird for us because. This is Dark's second round, but it's Ventric's first round, and this is just kind of the nature of the way we're running this tournament, and we're just making it easy for everyone, and whenever they can get together, we're just letting them have it. <laughs> All right. All right, so we talked a little bit about Scott here. Um, here's a tripwire. I mean, that doesn't that just gets the ping something, so that's interesting. Yeah, um... It was it was much better in the in the last matchup when his opponent had two um, two small characters. Um, yeah, yeah, he had the Night Racer and the uh, Motormaster. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, I I think it's a fine card to play in a deck like this. Main deck is like I think it's his only blues. Um, I think it's totally fine given the power level and given the ability to play it for free. Yeah. Um, as a meta call, I just obviously it's not going to have a huge effect in this matchup, but like unless you know obviously we're playing off the top, but um. Confirm it's definitely the not. They can hear me now, right? Just want to make sure. Go ahead, keep going. I read in chat that they can only hear you. I just want to make sure they can hear me. Yeah, I don't. I don't. They haven't responded yet, so I don't know. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, so the. the go ahead. Uh, so he's one away from from getting the KO. So like that's where if it would have been a more impactful card off the top, it would have been uh, much more powerful. I mean, stealing an attack there would have been amazing. very, very clutch. Yeah, yeah, it would have been amazing. Yeah. And see, this is this is this is the issue. Like, if he had Kamian crashes and or one shot stand in his deck, like I think he just wins this game. Right. Um, by, by stealing an attack from Sky Shadow, because there's absolutely no position here that that the Sky Shadow plane, like he can't get two attacks here. Like the only way he can get two attacks is with attacking with a tank and then letting and somehow like having the plane survive. But like. Not knowing his opponent's deck, like I would obviously think my opponent had direct damage in, in in his deck, and like so, if I was left with anywhere close to like two left, I would be in like a world of hurt. Which obviously he he feels like is in the same situation. The unfortunate right. so part just, here is it it's not going to cost him anything. No, yeah, but I mean, this is still going to be a pretty nice attack for his first attack of the game. So, I mean, you're looking at eight yeah, ten there. You know, I I, really, I don't think it's I don't. Uh, Wind charge is a card. I mean, obviously we we wrote the preview on it but like it's a card that <laughs> that i still don't really understand like whether or not obviously we knew about it before we knew about sky shadow and like the concept of basically getting using seven stars to just do a massive hit once and then the card goes away like what is is there value in that i think the seven? value for me and this is just lay after last night and then right here again tonight is that that opening round you you almost have to KO a character like it, it's the right. only option for right. me and if you don't I think the whole thing's kind of a miss I mean and like you said if he had the direct damage here and he could like steal the attack and like he can kill the, if he was able to KO the plane and then follow it up and like you know maybe have a large hit on per, on the actual Sky Shadow 
it be okay, but I don't even think that's going to happen. Right. I mean, so here's a treasure hunt where he only gets an Imperagio, which is like... That's a pretty big I guess whiff. It's, I guess it's better than getting none, but like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, the, the problem here is that it's going to... Um, uh, it's gonna cost. Uh, it's gonna cost another attack right there. Right. Right, and then that—that's what we were saying though—is that without the direct damage to follow up for those misses, like it's gonna. This is. It's gonna be a common theme if if that's what continues to happen. Yeah, I hear you. Um, and then you have to hope that uh, you know, I I I missed who was going with the die rolls because I was starting everything up, but uh. You know, I, I, I think you want to go first because of the blaster flip, for sure. And then you have to assume, though, when you're going second, that, like, he has to be able to KO the characters, you know, attack. So, like, maybe there's actually value in just doing that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just tough. Yeah, the, well, I mean, the problem is that I think he has to find a way to steal two attacks, and the only way to do that is to go first and hope you do well. And, yeah, and, and to have cards your deck that allow you to do that and uh, I just don't I don't know that, that exists so so how much damage so he just has the 10 on him now yeah so is this just going to come in and just bolt the the wind charger and get rid of it you think that's what happens here um no because he can just do two horrible activations to get rid of it like I think it's a waste I think it's overkill to be honest with you like I would I wouldn't do that I mean he's doing that um so yeah, he's just but removing I, it. That's fair. Yeah, I would just I, do it I, to the blaster. Personally. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you have like a Kamian crash in your hand, you could probably just do it that way. Um, but I would just take two activations as the game goes on. Like that guy's not a threat anymore right, either. Right, right, like, right. At yeah. all. Like horrible could have just literally just played two cards this turn and did the exact same thing and then just bolt whatever. But you know. Yeah, I, I just think it's you're quote overkilling by right, one. by one. Right, right. Um. And I just think it's 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 also it's not costing you a card, but it's costing you like an ability that like the other thing is. not I mean, you know, God, if you had, if you had Magray in his hand, then I definitely well, I guess he might he. I have to assume he just drew that Magray because uh, otherwise that's a that would have just taken yeah. care of him in, in hand. So. It would have been really really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even there, like if he bolts the Ramhorn, he just takes the force field out of the game. Also. Yeah, that's also true. So Ventrix deck is playing the uh, um, the Decepticon strategy, so he has the two star cards in his deck. But I think it's one. I think he decided to play one Mountain Missiles and one um, whatever that other card's called. Um, uh, even the score. Yeah, I think that's what he did, but I'm not. Positive. Yeah, he did. He split it up one and one. Okay. <laughs> so like, there's your there's your two damage right there, like from just flipping horrible and playing one black card. Well, not to mention that it was also two damage on the black card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to mention it was also a Kamian, yeah, Kamian yeah. crash. But um, so he doesn't have the force field here, so that's really bad. Yeah, because it's good chance that his character is getting KO'd off the board right now. I mean, there's no chance. Yeah, there's no chance he's not yeah. getting KO'd. I was trying to mute for uh, chat for baby that was getting ready to go to sleep. <laughs> we are good. We're clear now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like that, this is just right. Like everything that could have gone wrong has probably gone wrong at this point. Um, he definitely needed the force field because like the whole thing is that he's already at a disadvantage in this matchup, like is in the six to four. So like his two ways out of that are a wind charger KOing something and a ram horn getting a, a shield and neither of those things happen so like it, it, this is like worst case scenario yeah we're having or having ways of dealing damage outside of combat which he doesn't have yeah and even this like with, with the blaster like he, it's not even like he gets the blaster wheel out of this at all he doesn't even get close to it <laughs> you know yeah i i also I, I don't understand the frenzy here at all like i don't i don't think there's any advantage to having frenzy over uh steel jaw at all Frenzy is the the get the gets rid of tough one, right? Yeah, I mean, I think this is this is just. Um, I mean, you could have just played. He's already playing two belligerences, but he probably could have just played like a third. a third main deck, and then he wouldn't have even needed to yeah. to play Frenzy here. So he's swinging for what six? 
yeah, with full six, full six and five cards. So this should be a KO. Um, so it's really going to come down to. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's definitely yeah, it's too. Yeah. So it's eleven. So th- yeah, so this is what happened last night too. Where this like, might not be enough actually, because he hits the blue here. So he's actually he, he's at three. Uh, six, he's only going to take eight, and he's going to live. Eight, nine. Oh god. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. By one, I guess. The one on backup beam. Get there. <laughs> I mean, the good thing here is that, well, it, it, like it's it's very hard to tell. Like when I I know. It's very hard to tell early in in the format, like whether that's good or bad. Like, yes, he doesn't get the extra attack, but like from getting ominous out and and horrible probably he can probably survive a horrible hit without um, a huge extra like first year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but it's like you said, like he doesn't have a follow up now, you know. There's yeah. no follow-up to... like He doesn't have the direct damage unless he draws the other tripwire in his list. Um, he's not going to have the extra damage. Yeah, that's the real problem with the deck. I, 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 and, and it's interesting because I'd like to actually see what would happen if um, if he had an optimized list for this deck because I, I, I did see that there were ways of gaining some of the advantage back and doing like very large attacks right away. So, yeah, like, you um, know, I, I, I somewhat just uh, stress them is that like in this specific matchup, he has to have, he just has to have the right things happen and they didn't fall that way. And now there's the second tripwire, so we already know he doesn't have the tripwire in his hand. Um, so he's going to have to throw another attack at the Sky Shadow. And he, I think at that point, you know, you're already really far down. Yeah, I mean, if the Frenzy gets KO'd here, the game's already over. It doesn't really matter. Yep. And that's that's gonna be all shrewd on that one. Yeah. So Blaster here, I, like you said, like there's there, Blaster's always been able to cheat the system. He's always been able to cheat the game. So like you know, having a character like Win Wind Charger take place of the Fire Drive, like that that turn one opening hit, it can be massive if you're just like all in on that idea. Mm-hmm. So it which I think which I think is fine. Which I yeah, think is, is, right. is, is fine. It's just that. I mean, we even saw, uh, like, locally, uh, certain, certain decks with uh, the Sentinel Prowl, which kind of represents that same process, but the wind, you know, the wind treasure actually has more base attack um, on the first turn, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't think it's nearly as good on turn two, because, like, your opponent can obviously just throw a Sacrificial Lamb in front of him. Right. Um, but I'm not sure... Um, I'm not sure how big of a deal that is, to be honest with you, but... Um, we'll see. So I he's going to Sky Shadow for way overkill, obviously. I mean, it's his only shot though, because like you know, I mean, well, yeah, not, yeah, he not, gets right, he gets right hit. Yeah, from him, obviously. like like not not anything else. I mean, the Ominous is still going to come in here and you know still going to pick at him for probably it could even be five Pierce five like fairly easily. And then not to mention the horrible could also just play two cards. Like his character could still be KO'd this turn, which is the honest truth. And especially now with him picking up this this Scoundrel's Blaster, like that's. That just might be enough in itself with a, a black pip and a flip of, of horrible. So he's he's four pier six now, like guaranteed just by playing that, right? Right. Yeah. Against against Autobots. So. Right. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, uh, in this tournament, there's a lot of there's a lot of aggro slanted Titan Master decks. Yeah. Um, which doesn't surprise me, but at the same time, like, what I will say is that like. When you are playing an aggro slant to your Titan Master deck, like the heads themselves just have a lot more reach, um, because they just represent just mu- like a lot more damage, mm-hmm. uh, because you're basically getting like you know usually like a, a free plus two on them. Yeah. Um, and in this situation, I mean like getting ominous for like essentially for free. Yeah. So there uh, you go. Like like all over the place. They put on the seven already, and then like we said, like this is already a four pier six type thing. Oh, okay, that's an interesting. Yeah, that's, the backup that, beam goes. Yeah, okay. Go. <laughs> okay, okay. I got a little confused there myself. I'm like, why? Why are we doing this? <laughs> so what? Oh, he played wedge, right? Okay. Yeah, he played the wedge for the heal and deal, and then he flipped. Uh, so you get to five. So he gets the, yeah. So he gets the five pierce, eight or whatever it is there, but. Five his... over peers, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
But this is still, you know, pretty... Un it's it's just blatantly unwinnable at this point, which is unfortunate. But like I said, when you miss that force field and you miss that wind charger, this is kind of the risk you're taking uh, playing the blaster deck in this meta with all these six wide decks, it feels. Yeah, I, I just think, you know... I don't think it's unviable. Because I just think that if, if it was built differently, it would have uh, more play. Like, if it had played Fusion Bore over, um, like, Erratic Lightning, or if it had played Kami and Crashes, or if it had played uh, things like that, I think that it could make up for the lack of a character. I respect but... the, uh, the cut there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We talked about that last night. Nice. <laughs> How, I like, like it. I respect it. You want to cut yourself, yeah. <laughs> um... So th this game is going to come to an end here really quickly, son. I I, got, I want to take this time and, and kind of ask chat for a second. Uh, do you guys like this new overlay? Is it working? Do you guys like seeing the clock? Uh, I made the I made the, the screens a little bit bigger. I was hoping that this was easier for everyone to see things. So I, let me get some feedback on that, guys. Let me know if you like the, the new look to it. Uh, like I said, this is very much a work in progress for us. So we're we're kind of just running through and and trying different things out until it sticks. All right, so that is going to be the end of the first game. Um, I have to go and look at the sideboard real quick, but do you remember what was in um, Dark's sideboard? Uh, like more, like just more copies of other cards that a lot of them were in his deck. I didn't, re I don't remember anything that what was his like stood so out. So his like... character is RC. Okay, so he he brought in RC for the uh, the blue matches. It looks that way. Yeah. So yeah, two, yes. two two battlefield scan, two decipher, one enemy combat analysis. One escape route, two mounted missiles, and two sabotage armaments. Yeah, and the two mounted missiles are obviously there when you bring in RC, which right, right, so right. it doesn't do much in this situation. So the armaments are interesting. Um, that's not something we would normally see. I tell you what, last night Decipher was awesome. I don't know if you actually got to see the games uh, that that Chuck had played, but he 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 abused that card. <laughs> yeah, I haven't yet. Yeah, um, he he had a couple like he had a couple in both games in game one and two. Chuck was uh, he was able to do like six damage in one game. I think like it, it was actually really really strong. <laughs> I was we were me and Vince were very impressed by the uh, the decipher cyborg tech because there were two secret actions in play. Is that yeah, that happened? and it happened a couple times. It was really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good I idea. Mean, it helped that it was against Shockwave and there was a lot of secret actions, but it was it looked really really good in those games. I've only gotten through, I think, well, I don't even think I finished the first game of that match as I was rewatching it. Like, I, I think it was, quote, over, but, like, I haven't literally seen, like, you know, the cards be cleaned up yet. Um, so, did that go three games? I don't even, I think it went three games, right? Game one went three games. It went to time, actually. I'm going to check here and just let them know. Hey, guys, just want to let you know there's 43 minutes and 30 seconds left in the round, so you got plenty <laughs> of time. I just checked in. I told him uh, tonight I was going to check in more often, let him know with timing after games and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Like I said, we're learning. We're learning here, guys. We're trying to trying to make it better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these proxies are really easy to read, so yes, thank you, they, for, thank you for that. They um, helped. They helped. Um, um, and then I'm looking at uh, our horrible list. He has. Uh, two belligerents, one enforcement baton, one bashing shield, two hollow mana projectors, one reprocess, and two end hostilities. I think like you probably bring the end hostilities in here, right? Yes. Um, yes and his sure. character is gears, and he has the sabotage. Um, oh no, he doesn't have the sabotage. Oh yes, he does. He does. Okay, I see it now. Uh, yeah, so he has gears, and that's for the the combo match, obviously. Yeah, I assume he just takes out horrible. Um, yeah, you you take out horrible, and you just bring in gears. Um, yeah. You just you just like basically dirtle and prevent combo from setting up is the uh the strategy i i i've yet to decide if that's going to work or if it's going to pay off but i guess at some point spoiler alert, there is a combo deck in the tournament so we will we'll find out assuming they get out of they get out of their bracket i don't know if it's in this bracket but no but they're yeah. it, it, it's gonna happen all right i, I assure mm -hmm. you we're, we're gonna have it <laughs> <laughs> So, do you think the Blaster needs to go first again here, or do you think he should take a shot at going second? I mean, I actually think it's fine to go second, because what what, is, what is the other player going to attack? KO, right? That's yeah, what is the other player going to attack with? Like, I, I, yeah, I think this is a mistake going first. I, like, 
what does he do here? It's actually the sky shadow piece, and you steal an attack from it. That's exactly what you have to do. Right. And there and like by playing two cards, that's one way of doing it. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, it to me, it's like the only thing is that you are giving up an attack, and like I said, it's like this is a fight for position, so this should work. He should be able to KO this, the the plane on the first attack here if he doesn't have any blues. Because I mean, you're looking at right. already seven plus four cards. Like, there's a good chance he should get there. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. So, like, if there's yep. no blues here, if this is going to work, and he's going to steal two attacks from him. Yeah, totally agree. All right, and there you go. So he gets it. Yep. So he, he gets the KO, and this is what this is like best case scenario for him. This is exactly what he needed to happen uh, to to really give him shot, give himself a shot in this game. So this is this is something different from last night. We didn't get to see this happen last night. So now we're going to see how this plays out on the Sky Shadow side when you lose two attacks because i think that's that's one of the efficient ways to deal with sky shadows if you can find a way throughout the game to steal two attacks still two attacks yeah well, I don't, one attack can be enough but right two but two that's what i'm yeah. saying i think two yeah, is like the yeah. the real big deal and that's like the like the best way and it's it's obviously not easy to do that's the thing but that yeah. he, he just succeeded you know he, he was able to get away with it i mean he's gonna lose his wind charger probably but hey that that's okay <laughs> I mean, I'll take that trade, yeah. Right, right. Go to attack for my opponent for one character. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> That's exactly I mean, what he needs to happen. Especially in an aggro deck, yeah, like, totally. Um, so did he... Did we forget the Lightning Bolt as usual? Uh, I will confirm. Did he already draw on everything? I think so. Don't forget our Lightning Bolt, guys. Thank you. We call that yeah, the we call that the Gempty rule now. Thanks, Gempty. Yeah. <laughs> so Sky Shadow should be able to deal what ten, like ten plus the card here, maybe like math mathematically maybe more like eleven. The, I would think the answer is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, I just yeah, wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess there's a chance. It that totally depends on the card here, obviously. Yeah, there's a chance that Wind Charger could survive, but I doubt it. <laughs> um, You'll be okay, Gempty. You'll be okay. Oh, so here's the Magray. So that's like auto KO, right? <laughs> I think. Um, I'm, sure, I'm trying to think how this is gonna play out. So he's gonna attack there, and then he's gonna attack. Is he gonna? Is he gonna lose a, a blaster flip? No, he's gonna get it right at the end. So he's he's not gonna lose it. He's gonna get it. The way it plays out now, assuming that like the ominous doesn't pop out, um, they. He'll get the double attacks with the blaster and the frenzy. Yes. In the if, end, if he doesn't KO the uh, right. sky shadow, yeah. Right. So he attacks for three, oh, five, eleven here. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, it's interesting. Like without the magray, he doesn't get there. So right, right, right. That's really interesting. You know? Now he did. He did not target him with the horrible either. So he he just assumed he was going to get there, which I think is right. I think you just take that chance because, like you said, even if. Even if he doesn't KO the Wind Charger there, it's not the end of the world, because the next turn he can just flip his horrible and, and move the damage anyway, you know? Yeah, the one thing I... The only... I mean, I, I think Wind Charger is very good here, but, I mean, you never get that flip off. I don't know that that matters. Um, yeah. But, yeah, like, there are certain things, like, I you might want to, like... I think that's part of the process, though, right? Because, like, um, it's not like we were ever looking to flip our... Our fire drives or stuff like that, you know. So no, yeah, you're I right. don't, you're, I don't right. know that it's a big, like a big loss there. Yeah, you're right. Um, but like if you played things like turbo losers and things like that, it might actually you might actually be able to to or get like, an, uh, like start your engine and stuff. Yeah, I would probably if you go that route. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I don't think this is enough um, to KO this. It might be if he if he you know if you uh, start with the blue, it's not going to no, be. No. But he would have had to go like yeah. he would have to come up pretty high because it's at eight. Seven. One, two, three, no, four, five. Eight. eight. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not gonna be enough. Especially with flipping two blues. Oof. He did so he did bring in the hostilities like we assumed. Yeah, I can't imagine what other situation that would need to bring them yeah. in. So, so there's like four. It's like, yeah, oh, my guy still has five health. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> I mean again, if if he has if he has the, if he has the force field, he's a, yeah, I agree. If he has the force field, he has a, he has a legitimate shot here. But see, this is another reason why I don't like frenzy. Like, like any one of these, any one of these actions that he's playing could have just been a confidence into one of those actions if yeah. he was not playing frenzy. The confidence is a big loss, and it, and it does feel like frenzy is. Uh, it, it 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 had its moments in wave four because there was a ton of like really heavy blue decks running around with the tough. 
but it does mm -hmm. feel in wave five that we've like we're starting to get away from those things so i think the frenzy is like even worse now just because like you're not really getting those that extra boost of the tough and you're giving up the confidence to find these new powerful cards like if you can play confidence and find belligerence more often i think you need to be doing that yeah or finding the non-existent threat damage like you know like, right this right. would all be I mean, because you can actually play less of some of these other cards too by getting confidence, mm -hmm. yeah. just like just like in, just like in these other situations. So, so here, so here's here's the question: If so, he played the backup beam, so he can't. But he could have he could have potentially taken away the force field again here if he was able to play a, a black upgrade and a black action. Um, and, flip, and, fl and flip, and right? Yeah, and with the flip, he would have been able to take away the force field and maybe maybe get the KO. But with horrible in the other mode, he might not have been able to get away with it anyway. Yeah, I agree. Um, but the fact that he's going for Ramhorn for all the damage says to me that, like, he's... I, I don't think there's... I think that's a mistake. I think there's, abso there's absolutely no reason to put the damage on um, Ramhorn. Like, if he has the force field, you're just screwed. Right. Because, like, right. well, like you said, you like you said, you can't get enough damage on him to where it matters. Right. And like, if you if you're right, so if like if he just, just by doing this right now, if it just goes into him twice, like okay, well, force field still keeps him alive, so it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> right. And Which, but don't get me wrong, he can just flip back next turn and just ping him. You know, like that 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 can just easily happen. Also. Yeah. So here's the play. Here is like, do you just give it up and you just play the force field on? No, no, you play the. No, you play the. You play the force field. Yeah, I would. I mean, I guess he, no matter what he's gonna, yeah, because he's gonna get this. Uh, he's not gonna get another attack with it, honestly. So that's the only thing here. It's like he's not gonna get to attack with this character again anyway. Um, Unless he KOs the horrible, which is very unlikely, then he, he's that's not gonna happen anyway. Well, he's the thing is like he's gonna get two attacks here. So like, well, that's the problem with the Titan Masters though. Like he can't get two attacks. Wherever he well, wherever he wants. Um, I mean, he could if, if you want. Like, the thing is, I think you have to like send your first attack into horrible, and then send your second attack into the sky shadow to leave off the ominous. That's like the way you're gonna have to play this route. Um, I think you can actually send blaster into wherever you want. Like if you want, I, I think I might send blaster into horrible here. Right. And, and then send the frenzy eventually into the sky shadow. Yeah. If the if the if the blaster doesn't, because the blaster can survive a hit from what is it? Is it Grax or is it the other one? Ominous. Oh, the Grax. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like he might be able to survive. I mean, I think he can survive a hit from Grax. Right. Um. So it's going to depend. On, obviously, it depends on what he flips here, but um, force field doesn't really do a whole lot. Um. But it doesn't not do anything. So I mean, oh, it's he not played, awful. He played force field on frenzy. He hasn't played it. Anyway. Oh, oh yeah. he's playing. Oh, he just flipped. That's what the flip. Okay, okay. He flipped the force field. I was, yeah. I was reading chat. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the compliment, guys. <laughs> it was a team up, team up effort with Vince and I. Yeah, I think that's correct. I mean, like the thing is, the horrible once again, it can easily just take the force field out of the game. But I think if you're gonna ever get used of the force field, it's gonna be in the next turn. But I don't know that that's going to happen now, uh, just because you had to telegraph it. So, like, really, he could just spend two turns, like, harbling the uh, the blaster into the range of it anyway. So, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. This is definitely yeah. his best... This has been his best board position uh, so far throughout the match. So, this is the time where he needs to, uh, like, he needs to enforce here. And he played a secret action, so... What did he... He, he boarded in sabotage armaments, I guess? That was so all he did was... All he did was play out an enforcement batons on this frenzy, so like he did, he didn't have a good card to follow up with. Right. And I don't think he I don't think he played an action, so. Um, I think he can still cater this guy's shadow though. Wait, no, he doesn't have tough. Stop it! He doesn't have tough. Ah, uh, but yeah. It doesn't hey, matter. Hey, but... hey guys, put the rock toss and the emperor Fire shield back on top. You don't have tough this turn. In that order, yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, so. Good catch. So, <laughs> it was actually, it was actually fine. I, I don't know, I don't know they actually, in the end, if I, I don't know if he got there by one, but like. I guess if like. Probably, by, he, probably flipped, he probably flipped well, so it was fine. So I, I, think I guess doing, I guess doing it this way, you get to protect your blaster longer, right? So like now this, like, this guy is either going to have to go in and attempt to kill a, a, a frenzy, or he's just going to like finish off the ram horn here. Um, and then, like, 
I guess that's fine either way because you now get you get to like get another turn at this blaster uh, to maybe try and make a bigger swing. Which is gonna, what he's gonna need to do. He's gonna need to be able to to hit hard enough to to keep the numbers game here. So like even if, even if he let's say if he doesn't finish off the horrible here, he has the opportunity factor where he can just take out Ominous, and now it is actually a two on two matchup uh, to where like maybe he gets himself a shot. Yeah, but this is gonna be one of the like having. I played a couple matchups where both players had like tight masters and, and like it's that whole thing where you like never get a second like you never get an untap right. and I think that's basically what's going to happen here is like his guys are never going to get to swing twice right um because it's just going to become this clog board of like random new guys popping out all over the place <laughs> yeah and like um yeah, and so you can see the uh the bashing shield in his hand already well he got it back he got it back yeah 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 uh, yeah yeah so the four, I mean, the, he got the force field quote for free. Right, right. Um, well, this is also what I'm saying though. Like, this is the extra damage here is that he can just do one here, and then he can play another card. Right. Okay. So here it is. So he's gonna do another one, you know. Yep. And at that point, he's at eight. So like, he's almost already out of the force field range, where he does He's never gonna have to worry about the bashing shield. Uh, is it nine now? Yeah. Yeah. So it just goes to nine. So now he's like, all right, next turn I'm just gonna flip and and right. just do it all over again. Right. I mean, Ominous is going to do nothing here, but he's also, but he's going to soak an attack, and so it's going to come down to whether it's basically. I mean, Ominous is going to do. He's going to do four damage or more. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's five. Five. So we got yeah. yeah so we got the six pierce five. Seven? No, seven. Right? Yeah. No, no, six. Yeah. I, I it's I don't remember all the uh, <laughs> the starting attacks for these guys yet. <laughs> This is weird because of the giant pierce number. But yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, he, yeah, and also, then... we haven't seen him see too much play outside of the, uh, the the Sky Show at all either. No, I haven't seen him see any. But I don't really know what... He, he's very... I don't want to say he's expensive, but he kind of is in a way. Like, it's it's weird to say, but he is. So he's going to go like, with the reboot. So, I mean, he puts I, I himself to seven. I mean, I don't. if he didn't have a better card, he didn't have a better card, right? So... I think you just don't play it there because you, you have no way you have no way to get use out of it. You already played your upgrade. Yeah, I mean the, so the, the option there is like you could fish for a better upgrade. I just don't know that you can get one that's going to help you KO a fourteen health horrible. You know. Yeah, this is this is just like. But this is my play here. Like, is this a thing? Like, do you just take out Ominous here? No, I, won't. I think you have no chance but to do this. He hits for what eleven here. Right, so he takes out the ominous. Yeah, and I now I think that's a mistake. Well, I'm saying because now you go back to this two on two scenario. I mean, the difference is is that the frenzy can't KO the the bull, but with him getting the wheel back, he's it was never going to happen anyway. Well, I don't the horrible think... just the horrible just takes out the 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 blaster. I know, but I'm saying I I think no matter what, like you're not going to he wasn't going to be able to KO that horrible, so like he's not going to be able to get that play back anyway. I mean, he did a lot. Of, how much damage did he do? He, he did, did like a weapon. Yeah, but two. He would have. He would have took nine and still had, you know, five health. <laughs> did he have that much health? Okay. Oh, well, he has Grax, so yeah. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. he had he had two damage on him, so he would have been at three health. So what's he have? Thirteen total. Uh, no, nine plus five, fourteen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is just. In, in aggro on aggro, horrible is ridiculous because you're just getting incremental value and free direct damage out of, like, your cards. And a, a deck on the other side just can't compete unless you're getting equally powerful plays. And the the deck on the left... Oh, well, it's on the left for me. I don't know which side it is on, on, on screen. But um, it's just you're just, it's just out of plays that, that are relevant at this point. This is just a waste. So, well, it's not a waste if you just take the Enforcement Baton, right? Uh, you give your opponent a card. It's a total waste. Uh, I mean, it's dealing the damage is what he needs to do to erase the force field. Is what I'm looking at. So he deals the damage. He gets to, he gets to put him to ten, and now the force field means nothing. I guess he has no other black card in his hand, but he has four cards in hand. So yeah. I mean, and he has no other black card. I mean, I guess it's fine. No, and then I I think he just has a javelin that he's gonna play here. Yeah, and I know this is melee, but the point is that if his bull dies, like he's just gonna. He's gonna have a Grax with a free javelin type scenario. Oh, it's totally fine. Yeah, this is yeah, this yeah. is. I, I'm I'm fine with playing Enforcement of the Tons. I mean, uh, 
javelin as a primary way, way primary laser. I'm totally fine with it. Yeah, so he gets to what, uh, six, eight, nine? Enough? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so if he would have, even if he would have put the force field on, well, if he would have put the force field on Frenzy. Um, no, he just direct the damage again. It's The horrible just completely erases the force fields. Like with, Other than the Ramhorn, actual Ramhorn attack, which, once again, if he had enough black cards early on, he would have just erased that force field as well. But that's the whole point, is that the horrible just gets around the force field so easy that it, it it's not very helpful here. Yeah, this is not a this is not a positive matchup for Blaster in any way, shape, or form. No, like I said, he need, you definitely need a lot of things to go right and go in your favor. I think very early on when we were talking about Titan Master's attack, I think they even said that that some of the concepts that they used for Blaster and Soundwave were the way that they thought about how the how the, how the heads were actually going to work. Mm -hmm. And you can you can see that here, like. Yes, you're getting advantage when these characters pop out for Blaster, um, but it's nowhere near the advantage of, like, of... The characters that are the heads are just way more powerful than what these cassettes are. Right. <laughs> right. Um, you know, but I, but it, there are little things, like, you know, I do think if you had played Steeljaw, he would have he been, in this matchup, he probably would have been able to um, put out more of an offense. Like, if he would have if you would have popped out Steel Draw, I, I even think if you would have honestly, I think if you would have if he would have popped out Frenzy on turn one instead of Ramhorn, he might have saved himself an attack also on the Sky Shadow. Uh, that that's possible, yeah. Um, because you lose the tough, and uh, and to be honest with you, like what you well, I guess you can't you, you can't give up the Wind Charger attack. So I mean, but he right, but right. I'm but I mean, it's still really. That's probably what I would have done. Is like, I just don't see what the late game frenzy does versus the early game one, when there's actually a target where his ability matters. So, right. So he gets a um, nine here. He defends one, takes eight, but he's he's still only at ten. He's gonna live. So that's game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he didn't play an action, which I don't really. I mean, his hand must be bad. So. Yeah, as Chat's pointing out, like even even with stealing the two attacks, at that point you're still just even. <laughs> no, you're still up one for crying out loud! Oh my goodness. Yeah, but I mean, you you're. I mean, you're still it, more like you said, it was his best, it's the best case scenario. He had to do it, you know. Like it's that's his only shot in the match. Yeah, uh, I just like, think he had like, like he had very very, you know weak turns also like his draw was not efficient like he never his blaster attack like he didn't you know he didn't have like the two offensive plays i don't think at any point during the game which i think that's obviously hurting him as well because his because his treasure hunt did nothing right yeah the on. treasure hunt was just just a miss yeah so like yeah we're <laughs> we just gonna just... kill him we're we just gonna kill him out of combat here <laughs> it's three damage though well it's one and then it's two one and it's a move with a three yeah and so yeah <laughs> If he has the black upgrade, he gets to he gets to just do it. <laughs> He's doing it for the memes. Yeah, like if you if you, if I don't I don't mean to sound like I'm dissing on the deck or or the way it was built. I just I, what I'm trying to just look for is whether or not the there's viability to the strategy itself right. if it right. was adjusted. Right. And I think um, there is. Um, like I said, the, the, the shows, like the wind charger showing that like if he can KO things on, on that first turn, it's very, very possible that you could retool this to try and defend a little bit better. All right. So I'm going to mute myself to chat. So if you want to interact with chat for a couple while I go over some stuff with them, um, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Do you want to ask the other game if they want to start early? Yeah. That's what we're going to need to do. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those of you in chat that I think are there listening, if you want to start your match early, just let us know. Yeah, card disadvantage doesn't really matter. I mean, you you noticed that um, the Blaster player had multiple cards in his hand at any one time. Like, yeah, I think he ended the game with like five cards in his hand. So if I get if I get a dug too deeper and gotten um, exactly what, Blaster is a deck that means that you have to get cards. Yeah, I boarded out my exact, counter espionage. At the exact right I didn't time. think there was any great. So you have to have the force field when the ram one gets yeah, attacked. Not you a whole lot. To, that's me. 
yeah. always be playing most efficiently, you know, upgrades and 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 action. So yeah, hey, what's up, Dan? We can hear you. Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. No problem. It was a little bit of a learning curve at the beginning there. I was like watching the stream instead of playing my side. <laughs> like no, no, not not watching the stream. I meant like I watching my screen in front of me of him playing and in the mindset that I'm watching a stream. <laughs> so I think our second matchup is going to yeah. feature so that, that kind a, of threw me off a little bit for the first uh, first couple. Essentially, of and, I, a, uh, and I know I had some weird decision points. It's a sky shadow mirror. We have made some weird but plays, the, but it's one of them is a four, four wide list and one of them is a three wide list. I believe. All right. All right. Later. Thanks, buddy. Do I have to hang up this one? All right, chat, so I'm, you can see that I'm just going to edit this and try and set up everyone as best as we can. Yes. Chat can not hear you yet. All right. Um, 
I'm going to go back to them for a second. Okay, guys. All right, we are back. We are basically set up, guys. I'm just going to edit a little bit more on Cameron's side, just so we have it. And we'll be ready to go for him. All right. So, Scott, you've been looking at some deck lists while I was setting that all up. What do you got for me? Um, I think that Cameron's deck is interesting. So he... he for the record, neither of these players have um, improvised shields, which I find interesting, um, because Cameron's playing the um, the Decepticon stratagem to get mounted missiles, but doesn't have uh, <laughs> improvised shields, so I find that to be interesting. Um, Cameron needs you right now, by the way. Oh, already? <laughs> yes. Man. Uh, coming, Cameron. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. Hold on, I can't hear you yet. <laughs> Can he hear Scott? I bet you can hear Scott. Hold on. No, I don't. I muted. I muted them as well. I, they're muted to me. I don't know. Hold I on, can't guys. hear them. I right. can still hear him. What's up, Cameron? What's up? You can hear Scott. Yes. Okay. You have to. That's why you have to mute Scott for me. So each I have of to you, mute Scott. yeah, each of you guys have to go in and mute Scott for me. Uh, how do I? I thought I could. You have to get out of full screen. Out of full screen, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, it's. I don't know why it's that, but it is. It's a pain. Mute. Let me know when you guys are good. Okay. Good, Fred. All right, I'm going to mute Fred again and mute you. All right, I'll let take, you guys know in a second. Down. Okay. Continue, Mr. Landis. Uh, so, yeah, so th there's an interesting amount of double oranges that are in the deck um, because of that. And... So that's one thing I noticed. I, Cameron's deck has a lot more black cards in it, like uh, both orange black and um, straight black compared to Fred's deck. Yeah. Um, the one advantage I think Fred's going to have here is uh, that I think Cameron has both Mag Ray and um, what's the other one? Precision the mode one. Fire. Yeah, and and Motor Master will soak all of that. Will will not allow that to go on. Right. So I think that um, if he draws a lot of those, I think that, that um, Fred will wind up having an advantage here uh, because of that. Obviously, um, 
Cameron has horrible here, and which is all the motor match is also going to be really good again. So I think it's going to come down to like how many activations and cards and stuff like that can he can the motor master soak. Um, I think it's going to be what's really important in in this matchup. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, do you, what do you think you would do with the die roll before we get it going here? If if you were Cameron, you won the die roll. What do you think you want to do? Do you want to go first and just try and get rid of the motor master? Um, what's what is it? Motor master is like eat two or something eight like that. Two. Yeah. So if you if you put enough damage on him, the horrible can probably just take him out in one turn. Not good. Well, yeah, exactly. So I guess that's the route you go, um, because because he's just going to represent such a gigantic threat. Right. Um, and the characters are pretty much even, so we'll see what happens from there. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to let everyone know to get started, and we will get going. All right, guys. Time and around is officially going to start. Good luck, and I will check in after game one. You may begin. And timer. I love this new button I found. I found this new sweet timer, guys. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> All right. So, here we go. Oh, yeah. New names. Good call. Good catch, chat. Look at you guys. Um... So shout out to Cameron. He is arbitrary hero on YouTube, and he is kind enough to join us in for this event. He's a good friend. He's, he's, we've spent a lot of time with Cameron. And I think he's a day one patron, so thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. And then it's kind so, of the, it's the opposite here because Fred is a very new patron. <laughs> what um? Oh, so Fred went first. Okay, so he sends the plane into, I would assume into. One of the Sky Shadow parts, but I'm not positive. So he puts a lot of black cards here. Um, he's probably just going to do the four down and go listen to whatever target it is. I think he's probably just doing it straight Good up catch, chat. Good catch. I have the right names now. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's kind of the best I was able to do, Jemty. I won't lie. It's a very awkward camera setup that he has. So Sky Shadow does the four Pierce four, which is what I figured he would do, and puts damage on Horrible. I'm not sure. I guess that's fine. Um, he already has more attacks than him to begin with, so right. he's quote already at an advantage to begin with. But we'll see what happens. I mean, I think the overall number of characters is the same, but I think the um, uh, like the the quality of the characters is certainly better. So Cameron, if he plays a black card here, he's going to get his first taste of. That the, the damage is going to go to Motor Master. Right. So I'm curious to see what happens here. But he doesn't even have one to play, so it's fine. So he swings in with the plane with 4, 8, bull 2. Um, so he's going to, like, he has to try to steal an attack here. It's Canyon Crash, Mag Ray, Bashing Shield, and Reprocess. So 1, 2, 3. It's for 11, so the plane is going to live regardless. But like I said, Cameron's deck is at a plethora of draw. Well, I guess direct damage won't matter that much. But he, what he can do is move the damage with horrible, though. Yeah, What's up? Happen. I'm just messing around with the screen to try and make him look no. better. Rip. Did you see my message in Discord? I have not seen your message in Discord. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's so touchy sometimes. Rip. Rip. So I think the plane. I think the plane has. I, I think it's nine, not eight. Um, so that's that's a big deal. So we'll see what happens. You, you need me to put a da You need to fix the damage run counter. No, no, no. I just think that it's a big difference between having nine right. and eight on you. I'm saying like as a as a character. So Spider Rush is out a. a Hope that's better, guys. I'm trying. A, uh, <laughs> Hopefully that's better. A secret action. I have to see which secret actions uh, Fred has in his deck to know to figure out what you played. So this is a card last night that really made a difference for Fred was the fight for position. Now, I unfortunately, I, if he, if it already has nine oh, on it, it's not going to matter at all. The brave damage one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's only position. it's only when untapped, right? It only when tapped. Oh, only when tapped. Okay. Well, it still saves himself damage. Yeah, 
Um, I don't Unless the Harbol just takes it off the table, but oh no, I guess it's still fine. The Harbol can deal a couple damage to the tank and then just attack the plane, right? Or no, it still just can just take the plane off and then attack the the Sky Shadow. Yeah, I don't like the not attacking with the tank here because I think he's he's very he's very depend he's he's very dependent here on on getting some damage done. Well, I think he doesn't under, I think he doesn't realize that the flip from Harbol is a move effect. Mm -hmm. So like. He, that gets around the the motor master ability, right? So it's actually not going to do anything. If he's at eight, it's a different story. I, I just can't tell from that die. Um, but I think it's a nine because I think I see the little line at the bottom of it, yeah, and that's the way twelve side. It looks like a nine. It does. It's really it is hard. It is hard to tell from yeah. our screen. On twelve sided, that's usually the way they are. Um, <laughs> as I'm a, looking as I'm looking around my desk for twelve sided. <laughs> yeah. So he plays a fusion borer. Uh, we're just going to put one damage on Motor Master. Right. So it's going to come down to whether or not he. I mean, if he if he flips horrible here, I can't see how like this is going to be a real rough position for uh, for Fred because he loses an attack with a tank. He he loses his uh, his upgrade play from last turn. I can't tell what that card is. Oh, that's the Fusion War. Okay. So it was a Kamian crash on the Fusion War. Okay, oh, so the... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then he flips the Horrible. If he moves the one damage to the... The plane, um, it'll be good. Yeah, it'll be... I have a feeling I'm going to get a judge call. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling they're... I mean, I, I can't hear what they're saying, so I don't hold know whether on, or not... Hold on. I, yeah. Cameron, what, what player... Motormaster has to be the target. Cameron, Cameron, what play were you trying to make there? Okay. Talk to me, Cameron. So we'll take... Cameron? Uh, we'll take the damage off of Horrible and put it on Motormaster. Cameron? Cameron, can you hear me? Oh, no, you did. Uh, that is my action and my no. upgrade. No. Um, I flipped. We will Cameron? swing... Cameron? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that is, that, that is already... Yeah, yeah. Un unmute me, Cameron. What? T tell him to unmute me. Unmute Dan. Unmute Dan. Unmute Dan. Yeah. I can. Where did that uh, go? Problem. There he is. Yeah, I can hear you now. Um, I was wondering. Yeah, I was wondering if. Since I'm moving damage from horrible, if I can move it to the plane instead of it's okay. a move, not a damage. It's not so... a... Oh, okay. So motor master is at four. Sorry, Cameron. Oh no, you're fine. So yeah, move the move one damage from horrible to the plane <laughs> rather than to um to motor master. Thank you, Dan. So, and we're back. <laughs> so what's the deal? Uh, he was trying to move the plane, and Fred was tr trying to tell him he could not do that. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we had interviewing correctly there to make sure that because it, it looked to me that Cameron was definitely trying to move, and he he did specifically say it says move damage, not deal damage. Does it get around it? And I, the answer is uh, yes. So yeah. we're good. Yeah. So it's unfortunate because it's like it's like. The quirk of the ruling really hurts, like two turns worth of plays from both players. Right, right. Um, but I mean, but that's I don't know. That, that's that's lessons learned, right? In 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 your first tournaments, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm confused. Like maybe he was on eight. I guess so. Yeah, I just can't see the die. That's that's fine. Then like I yeah. I, Okay, I'm gonna. I guess he's on eight. I don't think he like changed the damage he had in this character. So right, I just legitimately can't see. So um, so so there, I think it's actually fine. I still would have attacked with the tank. Right. Um, but um, big guy. Yeah, because like you said, you still lost an attack out of the deal. You know. Yeah. So like that's why I would have attacked with the tank second. I think the night racer attack is. Like is poor there. Um, so 
because now you're in a situation where you're I, I think I actually think you've gotten as much value as you can possibly get out of Motormaster here. So I think what you I think what he needs to do here is swing with Motormaster and And then try and just KO the the horrible the, with the, the horrible shadow. with the sky shadow, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to get... You definitely don't need to get any more out of him. Especially now, because, like... You're, not that you're forcing him to attack into him, but I agree that, like, you're not going to get anything more that's going to matter enough. Nope. So, it, what, he just goes into the tank here, right? Like, you have to? Yes, 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 yes. But I think it's not really worth the effort. So he's a fusion bore, so he's 11 pierce 7 <laughs> to start. <laughs> and he... He flipped very oddly. I can't even... It's like all... It's definitely all black, for sure. So it goes to at least eight. It's hard to tell some of these, yeah. It's a scouting mission, which gives you one more black. It's a... I don't know what the thing underneath the... the um... <laughs> that is a giant sky shadow, yes. <laughs> he flipped no oranges, I can tell you that much. I just don't know how much pierce he did. Clearly, whatever Cameron takes, how much Pierce he did. Right. It's, I think it's going to be 8 or 9. Looks like 9. It's not It's not 10. It's right, it's not 10, right. So we got 9, <laughs> which is, I mean, yeah. that's not bad. Brody. Especially if he just turns around and he, you know, he gets a shot at the plane now, too, just to, to longer the combine and deal more damage. I guess there's we yeah. don't have to worry about any uh, bolts in this matchup. <laughs> no, no, we just have to worry about the permanent tough from the night tracer. Right. And what are the secret actions he's playing in his list? I can look it up real quick. Hold. Uh, he he put the hold the line, so it's definitely right. there's at least one hold. Line. So he has. Conce oh, he has concealing constraints in the list. Right, that's what it is. He has a bunch of yeah. concealing constraints. That's yes. right. Yes. It looks like that's it, though. No, I don't see anything else in the main deck, at least. I saw what he has. Puppies. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, puppies. <laughs> I don't know what he's on here, though. He was, like, growling at something outside. I don't even know what's out there. Um, so, how much damage can the horrible realistically do to the sky shadow? I don't think he can, can he do. I don't think he can do ten. I mean, but, with the grenade launcher, we're talking some damage, but what's he? At? He's eight to begin with, I think. He would be in that eight, mode. Eight so. base. Yeah, he would need to to go up a little yeah, bit more. He, he, yeah, he can't KO him without an action, also. So he's going to flip over, I assume, concealing contrails here, yeah. So that's good, because he gets the extra blacks out of the deal. Um, and he's, you know, he's, his defense is going to at least be a four or five, you know? Maybe more. Probably more. He has tough three. So... Right. Um, <laughs> They're just like waving hands back at one another. <laughs> so he's a pretty decent. That's that's a pretty good attack. So it's, it's at 13? least thirteen. Yeah. That was like magic. Oh wow, that's a good defense though. Yeah. It's all the blacks count. Yeah. He's only gonna take. I think. I think that was seven maybe. One, With two. the two originally, or he flipped seven. Yeah. He's definitely alive. I just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think he defended for seven. So he took six here. I think. Yeah. He goes to sixteen. Yeah. So. That's a pretty good defense. That was a good. That was a good. Uh, a good time to have that. <laughs> Did the Contreras keep him alive? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It gave him okay. a plus five defense. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. I was like, I didn't know whether or not it literally kept him alive or not. 
So, the I I I don't like I don't even know what you do with Motor Master here. Like, I, you're, I he's going to get sky sky shadow at some point. Right. But you want to give it to him, you only want to give it to him at a time where your sky shadow isn't vulnerable. Right. So I think you just pick at the plane, or you just take a pick at horrible if you want. Well, I think he just he's gonna. I hope he's attacking. So he horrible. might he might just attack the plane. He's gonna be. Right? No, I think he's attacking. He's got to attack horrible here. He can't let he I, he can't let his sky shadow attack his. He can't let camera. He can't let Cameron's sky shadow attack his sky shadow. That's his only way of like, of. Of, like whoever has the sky shadow superiority Does will win Motor this. Motormaster base two attack rate, so that's what five to start. I, he's more in this mode. I have no idea how much he is in this oh, mode. Oh, he flipped. That's like right. Four. Yeah. I want to. Four. I want to say maybe. Yeah. So that's exactly. What, that's so exactly gonna, what I would do. He's just gonna KO the horrible. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. good. So now, how much how much damage is on the um, sky shadow? Has sixteen on him. Uh, nine plus. Well, yeah. That uh, Fred's Fred's has sixteen. Yes. Okay, so he has a gra- He has what a Grax. Here yes. left. Yeah. So I guess it's possible that Grax could KO the Sky Shadow, which would be a real problem. Um, it's what you need to happen. <laughs> yeah, this is this is why. Well, this is why I would not have exposed the Sky Shadow that early. I think that's a mistake. Oh, the I think piece, if you the piece that's not bad. <clears throat> yeah, this is. So he'll have. 12 damage on? No, 13 damage on. Ah. And what was the... <laughs> I do like that he made, like, a, a bigger paper for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, do, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> what is the thing, what is the upgrade that was on the plane? What, what is that? Do you have any idea what that upgrade I have is? To, I'd have to look at the list again. Cameron is... It could just be an energy capsule. My yeah, guess, either way, it stays around. I guess it's yeah. an energy capsule, or he has he also has power cells and increased durability. But I think it's a, I think it's a capsule. There's a lot of text on that for it to be the other two. <laughs> yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so, process of elimination is it's a, it's a capsule. <laughs> I think this game's just over. If Grax KOs a character here, if Grax KOs Motormaster here, this game's just over because the Sky Shadow is going to a, going to KO the other Sky Shadow. Um. So I I think I think the mistakes this game are are just the the attack in the like I think just when he exposed his character was just a mistake here. Right. Yeah, and I mean the the, the PTT can turn a game around, and that's kind of what it is. he. He gave Cameron enough turns to draw that PTT to for this to happen. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I think. I mean, I I would not do it, but I think in the end it's going to wind up just being overkill. I think the game was over when because Sky Shadow just has too much damage on him, and then right. and then his Sky Shadow was going to only have, I guess, what at max like the same amount of damage, but it was it was going to be over regardless. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Ominous can come back and strike back here. And then, like, you know, you have a full health Night Racer, so it, it there's a chance that, like, he he's not completely out of this. <laughs> I love the smiley face. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to... So so I guess if... I don't know how many cards he has in his hand. So if, if, I guess if the Ominous can... If the Ominous can KO the Sky Shadow here, then we're Which, back in... It's realistic. Back in that, the game. It's realistic that it's possible. Yeah, I just don't know what his hand is. Um, we haven't seen him really green anything back, like like Scoundrel Blasters or anything like that. So I, I don't really know what the situation is here. But it needs to be, it needs to be a really good hand, right? Um, because he's only a two attack to start with. He's going against a two defense to start with. So like, even with the Pierce Four, like I, I don't, it's going to be very difficult for him to do that much damage, starting with a two attack. Yeah, he's definitely going to need two offensive plays. Who's more sort of helps that's a, giving it's, you it's pier seven? Huh? Yeah, I mean, it's a five pier seven. So that'll do it if he can get two oranges on the flip. So all he needs to do is basically play something that gives him something that gives him the ability to get to plus two attack. So if it's right. like a fight for fight for position or, a, or anything like that. 
It doesn't look like we got there. Oh, we got a secret well, action. Okay. Yeah. I will so like to, I'd like to point out everyone that Fred is playing from Malaysia, so <laughs> yeah, the connection is is going to be what it is. But it did look like he got to seven, so he's going to get that seven pier seven. Yeah, see, this is what I was saying about the Titan Master games. It's like I don't even know that we're going to get a second round. Yeah, you like, might not. I mean, we will. We got the... the Night Racer is going to get to untap. I mean, we will, but I mean, like yeah. realistically, like like. But this, I mean, I mean, it, this is. It time feels time. like it, it feels like we're not, but I mean, right. I know we are technically. But right. it feels I mean, like this this is twenty minutes, you know, twenty minutes, and we have yet to untap a character. <laughs> no, Cameron. Cameron had his extra with PTT. It was swing with Sky Shadow. It was swing with the Grax swing. With right, Sky right, Shadow. right. So now, yeah. So it was definitely the energy capsule that was sick enough. Yeah, yeah, because it stays around. So he's gonna rock toss somebody. I don't know. Who. I guess Night Racer, right? I mean, if you think, unless he thinks he. Well, he's what three pierce. He has four, three so. pierce three. He like he he's got it already. Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. Because I I always forget that Ominous is only. Oh, so the hold the line. That's still three pierce three, so it's still good enough. Did he go after? If he goes after the Ominous, which is like the the better play in my opinion. Yeah. It looks like it because he didn't heal any damage off off the Night Racer, so. Yeah. So the whole line doesn't do anything. But I mean, like whatever. It's it didn't. Yeah, there. it was just there. But like I said, he's in this Night Racer can very easily take this game down. It's gonna like he. It's gonna require a significant amount of cards on. Uh, on Cameron's side. Oh, uh, Cameron misses PTT. If both guys were tapped, so he just would have been able to draw a card and play things, but he definitely misses PTT. Okay. Good catch. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. He just would have just gone with a with an un, he would have got to draw a card and play a card with characters. Yeah. We are definitely too far to rewind that one though. So what do we get there? Uh, it's too cool. Uh, it's yeah, too I, I can't see that. that. I have no idea what any of these cards are. <laughs> I assume it's a Kamian crash. Yeah, it's possible. But maybe not. No, it's he not. Didn't take that. I... It's an orange black. I know that much. Yeah, so now we just have this five health character. Oh, is it increased durability, maybe? So I maybe, have no maybe idea. It might be increased durability, so he might have an eight health character here, which I guess that would be interesting. No, it's the other one. It's the the new one. Oh, I, yeah. I assume the he, power cell? I assume he, yeah, I assume he owns increased durability. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> so, right. So it's the utility one. I don't know. I, I don't know what he, I don't know what it was. I have no idea. With it falling off, I definitely don't know. Yeah, it's too much quieter. I have no idea. He's not playing the untap one thing, so... Oh, it's a, it was a fusion board. Oh, okay. Yeah, it had to be a fusion board because it fell off. But, you know, this, this Night Racer just has to go in and deal, you know, five damage, and that's going to be the game. That's definitely going to be enough. Okay, so we're going to go into game two. Um, if you can start discussing the sideboards, I'm going to just talk to them real quick. Yeah. So I know I know Cameron's character is Clobber, which I don't think he's going to bring in here because it's just more of an advantage not to have there. I know Fred's sideboard character is um, Windsweeper, so I don't think he's going to bring him in there. Well, you have Motor either. Master, so... Um, so let me take a look at the... 
incentivize me to do it. Then, uh, then the camera doesn't uh, have any light. Cameron, can you? So he has three superchargers in his board, which I think are actually fine in this hey mirror. But I, but I think he's they're probably there for for blue mirror. Alright, we're back. So I don't think there's nothing really interesting. I think that Cameron can bring in because he doesn't have a lot of aggro on aggro cyborg. There's no in hostilities or anything like that. Fred actually has um, rock tosses in this sideboard, which I think would actually be pretty good here to bring in. Um, he also has a stable cover in his board, which I think will be fine, and an infiltrate, which he will probably bring in. And I, I'll lose the initiative. I think that's the untapped one. I don't. That obviously doesn't do anything. Um, oh, yeah. But I, that's, that's the untap one. Yeah, but I. But I. He will probably bring in the rock tosses. Um, I think would be probably pretty strong here to bring in just as extra direct damage. Um, is probably so, what he'll bring in. I mean, so Cameron has like clobber. Like you don't. You don't. Like, there's no chance he just like switches clobber, right? I think that's only for control matchups. I, I, right, I think right. I think the health swing in the aggro matchup is just too important. Right. Um, now he would bring in his. I don't know. Maybe he brings in his own hold the line. I, I guess I would bring it in. So it's I'll interesting. It I, I actually. I'll keep it so the same. I guess I was wrong last game. Like I thought. And I thought the game I will... was over. But I, I, I'm trying to understand. I think. I think the reason why Fred won is 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 like all those fusion borders that he that he drew. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, it came down. Like I said, like it came down to the point where he was a. Uh, the the full health night racer just is what kind of got him there because like uh, Cameron just couldn't draw out of that that damage that he had to do. Yeah, it, she her health is just very high in these matchups. Right. And the two and the, and the, again it's two defense. It always for me it's always about characters with two defense and decent hit points. So. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, um, on Fred's side, yeah, you kind of already covered. You just bring in you definitely bring in that stable cover, right? I think so. I mean, it's and you can make an players. argument to bring in the infiltrate also. Yeah, I think he probably will. Um, I think having a smattering of blues will help. I mean, a lot of this has come down to like one, one hit point remaining a lot of times. So. Um, right. Yeah. Like, I assume Cameron chose to go first again. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So I think last time I think he still swing with the plane, which is what he did last time. And I don't, I don't, I, I think he should go for the. I, I don't think he should go for one of the sky shadow pieces, but we'll see what happens. I mean, going first, it's like I said, like maybe you just remove, you try to do your best, remove motor master from the game, and then you just play that, play that way. I mean, you just try to get rid of an attacker, which is right, what you right. should always be doing as like any aggro deck. So yeah. I mean, he's like, he got to what? Okay, so he did go after Motor Master, which I think is the right play. Yeah, I only got to six attack, so that's the the buffer there. Yeah, like I said, when I was looking through Cameron's list, there's a lot of single black cards in the deck, so like, it's it's definitely possible in aggro and aggro that you're just not doing enough damage um, a lot of times because there just isn't enough oranges in the deck. Right. Um, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I just, something I happened to notice as I was going through it. Um, there are, like... A smattering of what I would consider to be like blanks in a matchup like this. Right. right. Um, 
But I guess if you're playing a bunch of fusion boards and stuff like that, it, it, it's fine, obviously. And if you when you eventually have Ominous, it's also fine. Mm-hmm. Fred swings back with his plane and does a bunch of pierce as usual, I assume. Because I can't tell. Five. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, guys, I know how I know it's definitely a little bit hard to follow these uh these cards. It's hard for us too. We're doing our best job though. And fighting through the glare. Yeah. It's weird. Like some of it's fine and then like there's that one spot that like he probably didn't realize earlier and like and of course now he does it's like oh well, we can't fix it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's weird because it's like these uh we, and we we've, we've kind of like repeated it a couple times but it's like like these games they feel they feel like like long, you know? Like it really they're 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 very interesting to me because it's like every turn is like this impactful turn in the game. Uh so it's it's pretty weird that like these aggro on aggro matches like just feel like they actually like can really go the distance because of the amount of interactions with the titans yeah i mean you have to get every use out of your guys because like i said a lot of times there just isn't a second combat round right right so like your, your guy just may not do anything anymore and i think that's where that's where the advantage of sky shadow really is in these aggro on aggro matchups because you don't even care if those things go away they have to go away eventually so um and it just makes you better so that's the big advantage there yeah, but like we can see like very differently here from you know last round where we had the blaster on screen and you know he didn't have any titans in his lineup and then like you see this where you see all these titans and like the difference in game state is like incredible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it takes a lot of getting used to. Um, right. I swear to God, every time every game Fred has that point <laughs> position and it's good. It's good. It's really good. Yeah, it's um, just it's so. But but it's like you say, like he should swing with the tank here. Either that, or yeah. he, he can fear that the the motormaster could get KO'd. So maybe you do attack. Oh no, it, 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 I mean it could still be KO'd out of combat, obviously. So maybe like you still look at that. But um, I think once again, I think you just attack with the tank here and and not lose anything. You attack with the tank here is your best chance. Well, it's your best chance of doing more damage. Also, well, there's that. Um, I don't know what he flipped. Oh, so, um, scouting mission and something else. So it's just probably a little bit of pierce that was dealt. Yeah, two pierce that was dealt. Uh, was it just one pierce? I think did it was he, two. Did he attack the plane or did he attack the tank? He attacked the plane. Okay. Because it was seven on Hey, Cameron, can you Please. just move that damage to the plane? It looks like you're split between damage. Yeah, 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 thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I had to tell them to... Are they both muted me? I'm like, guys, you don't have to mute me. I'll mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> so the big thing here is Fred obviously has to attack with the Motor Master now because otherwise he just won't get any value out of him. Right, right. And like, I like... I like Fred's deck, but my one issue with it, and I've, I've come and I've, I've seen this a decent amount, is like... You have to have some character that actually flips. Otherwise, you're just losing too much of an aspect of the game. Yeah, that's fair. Um, now, and I know we've we've talked about this a little bit too. Do you uh, do you think there's another possible five drop option uh, that like that he could think about playing? Like, I know he has what the RC in the board, right? Is that what he's boarding? Who, Fred? Yeah. No, he has um, he has Windsweeper on his board. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Insta are you talking about instead of Night Tracer or instead of Motor Yeah, like, instead of saying... Night Tracer, instead of Night Tracer. If, if, you, if you are in on the, on the Motor Master and you want to go that route, um, do you think Night Tracer is just like the 11 health body or do you think you could be doing something differently? Uh, you can play a more aggressive character, for sure. Yeah. Um, I, just think, I just think you're... <laughs> I do love that the Motor Master eventually flips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he has to. I mean, like, because... And he has to flip here, like... Otherwise, he's never going to get any value out of them. That's my big thing. Is like, there's a lot of decks I've been trying to build, and it's like, it, yes, it was. You always wanted a, a way to like, to have a non-flipping character Spires in your deck to like, yeah, it's contra contrails as usual. I'm sure. Well, it could, like you say, he, he could have boarded in infiltrate, and he could have boarded in. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all the true. covers. Yeah. So it, yeah. it could be one of those those one shot cards now. Yeah. 
I love the giant, giant sky shadow. <laughs> So here, I think, like, you, ha you have to swing motor. Well, he, ha he has both attacks. That's the issue. Mm -hmm. So I think he has to swing, well, he has to swing Motormaster not into, so he has to swing Motormaster into the tank is what I would do here. Right. And then swing the Sky Shadow into whichever, P I guess, the tank again. Right, right. That's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think the cassettes are a good idea as the other five drop. I was either I, I was actually thinking RC because you can just constantly flip her to heal your team for one, um, and I don't think that's terrible in this format. And then yeah, especially when, when it's eventually going to be healed too. Yeah, and and like when in doubt, you can just kind of go off and tee off. That's why I was just like the the character that came to mind for me. So where did he swing into the in the horrible? I think he was just swinging into the tank. Yeah. I mean, he just, this is kind of what happened last game. He just straight up KO'd, you know? <laughs> he's not going to do it. He's, well, if he's, he's swinging a horrible again, I can't. No, it looks I like he's going to the tank this time, maybe? Or no? It's six pierce damage under that. So the horrible's going to live. Because he has, what, like... 18 health or something? Or 17 health? The, what, the, is, the, is the durability... That's the plus four. That's plus four, so then, yeah, 18 health, right? Nine plus five plus four, yeah. So, he's got a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, Motor Magic is going to bite outside of combat here, and then I assume he's going to swing... I guess the... Like, I guess the plane... I, I would swing the tank here, because, again, it comes down to, like, whether or not they have... Uh, um, outside of combat damage, he's going to swing at the plane, obviously, since he played the, the weapon. Right. There. I mean, so the plane should be able to KO here. I mean, like, with the constraint, if it's constraints, then he's okay. Um, he, he'll, he, he might be able to defend enough. But if it's, if it's like a stable cover, or if it's the infiltrate, well, then, you know, he's probably going to KO that Sky Shadow. Uh, seven bull two, so like a and now I think he's he's gonna live at like one. He's gonna attack with the oh he's gonna flip the bull okay okay. Because right, he's gonna move well he's gonna move a damage here too. Yeah 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 he he, he might get it exactly exact now. It's, but he it, has it tough, all it all depends on the secret action for sure. Yeah he has tough one also so an extra tough so. Yeah. Yeah Fred's deck's interesting. Um, there's a lot of cards I probably would side deck that he has main deck like. Contrails to me seems really good in this um, in this mirror. Yeah. And he has a lot. I don't think he has any. I think the only straight black he might have is King and Crash. I don't think he has any like. Well, the 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 Contrails also. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is a Contrails, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, because it's just gonna basically. I think it's just gonna damage Pierce. He can't do Pierce like a thousand, so. Right. Um, I mean, so like, flipping double oranges helps, though. <laughs> I don't think it's going to matter. I think it's just going to just come down to how much pairs he does, because I think he's just going to defend for so much damage. It doesn't yeah. matter. So he goes to 7, 8, 9, 10, Pierce, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, so I bet you he's going to want to take him to 4. Yeah. A couple seconds go by, and all of cards... All the cards will be flipped. Yep, there they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a magic trick, guys. <laughs> yeah, so he definitely just took the Pierce 4. Yeah, he's or a Pierce 3. Exactly. Or goes Pierce 3, yeah. yeah. But now we'll get to combine and have big guys, most, most likely. Yeah, I think you... You just sacrifice the knight. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, it's possible that she survives the hit anyway. Um, yeah. Well, you probably attack with horrible. Uh, I, I could see him swinging horrible so he can get the. So Cameron would be able to get the sky shadow attack off, uh, type thing. So he came in crashes. Does that kill the horrible? It doesn't kill anybody. No, because he should have eighteen health. So that should just be two damage. Yeah. It's a lot of health. Uh, he needs a bat. If he had a battery shield, it would knock him out. That'd be cool. Yeah, because that is an armor. Um, Backup beam. Which 
isn't going to do anything. Well, it's going to get him to Pierce 3, for sure. Yeah. Which is what it needs. So that's I'm shuffle. Are you sh shuffling? I was like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ed, uh... Well, there's all the Pierce. Right, you got the Pierce 3, so it's good enough. All right, so the the tank Cameron's tank had no damage on him, so he Sky Show just has the ten on him. Right. So we we could see some gameplay kind of fold out exactly how it did last game, which isn't too shocking, but it, it looks like it's going to get to that same type of status where we're going to have potentially. I mean the night racer it's going to it's going to have damage on in this game which will be the difference whereas last game it was a full health night racer I mean assuming he just sacrifices his his horrible essential like this yeah, is Yeah cuz I I don't think you can get any more value out of it because you can't even play a black card to like you you have to play your cards now right cuz you can't even play a black card to deal a damage or you'll just KO your own horrible Yeah I think this game is already over to be honest with you I think because I, I think what happens is the horrible attacks Night Racer doesn't doesn't KO her and then he's forced to send the Sky Shadow into horrible, which will, unless he can get rid of the horrible outside of combat. Right. Um, which is the fear then, for Cameron for what it's worth, but yeah. But I but I think I think given the fact that his Sky Shadow only has ten on it, me and given the fact that Fred's deck has such a very pip lineup that it's it's it would be very difficult I think for. Fred Sky Shadow without a weapon currently, mm -hmm. with only cards in hand to actually take out um, his his Sky Shadow. Right. So like I wouldn't, I don't actually think that it's that big of a threat. I mean, obviously you'd want the horrible to survive to not even put yourself in that threat category, but I don't. I think it's gonna be real difficult for Fred to win this game just just based on the the pit mix of his deck because I think it's just whiff on the Sky Shadow on Sky Shadow attack, even if that is with the the option that's presented which i don't think it's going to be so i don't think it really matters but i just think that i just that's why I'm just, I'm just saying i think no matter how you slice it it's it's not a good position for fred right now so he did flip the body mode there so if he does play a black pip here he's going to have to ko his horrible so yeah, yeah we, we have grenade launcher so let's let's hope cameron doesn't do this to himself <laughs> or play a different armor <laughs> yeah all right we're good we're good thank you cameron <laughs> So he's attacking for, what, eight? Just eight, yeah. Eight plus whatever he calls. Yeah. So ten. Ten, a little, Pierce. Not much Pierce. Pierce one. Uh, defends for three. Takes a Six, second. Seven. Which is in range of, like, Grax being able to KO her in one shot now. Realistically. Oh, it took six. Okay. So what's he at seven? Yeah. I still think, I mean, that's still the Grax getting to six attack over his defense, so it's still extremely po possible for Grax to knock her out, so I don't really think it, that was a good attack, because that's that's the range you need to get her in, is like basically within Grax range, is what you're looking for. There's another secret action, which I assume again is the Contrails, and the backup beam. Right, right. Which this is going to way overkill. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is for certain. That that is a dead bull for sure. <laughs> yes. And he he laid the other secret here, right? So. Yeah, I assume it's a contra. Yeah. The difference is this time is that we have a Pierce. You know, probably a he probably is going to easily get pier six with the sky shadow attack. So it, it maybe it's stable cover, you know, hopefully that'd be a fun swing. Yeah. So, I mean, Cameron just swings his sky shadow into his sky shadow, probably knocks him out. And then it's like, well, would okay. you try and swing the Grax first to kill the night racer? Right? No. I don't care about his opponent getting another attack. It doesn't bother me at all. Like, just give him the attack now, like, with the the ominous. It doesn't matter. The ominous attack is is worthless. Fair, fair. So, like, you're basically just putting yourself, like, you're controlling the... Let me think about this one. You attack. You attack back. 
you attack back. Yeah, yeah, but you still get the wheel. Because I don't think I don't think I don't think his ominous can actually take out either one of your characters. So you still get the wheel, so it should be fine. I have no idea what you played there. Uh, dealt with oh, precision, damage, precision, precision fire, fire precision. Yeah. So he named all. He just named all men. Yeah. Which is fine. Mm, yeah. Oh. Get there. Made if his plan is if his plan is to swing with Grax's plan, then it's that's a really good play. Or it doesn't really matter. It doesn't hurt him at all, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he doesn't, it's, I mean, it. it's your best play. It's your best play. <laughs> Yeah, so that he is gonna do that. Oh, he's gonna wait. Yeah, he's gonna. He's gonna do what you said. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take space. out Night Racer and we'll see what this is. It's hold a line, so that's pretty good. So that's that's gonna limit this damage for sure. It's three. <laughs> yep. So she's gonna be a ten to survive. Yep. Which is fine, I think. You know. Because uh, now the Sky Shadow just runs in, and it's, you're still in the same situation, that, but the Ominous can now attack the Grax, which I don't, you know, if that's what happens, you're probably okay anyway. How much time is left the way that somebody's asking about 14 that? minutes. No, they're fine. Just so you guys know, there is 14 minutes left in the round. Just checking in with you guys. Um, and there, honestly, you guys, there's a good chance that I might give them a bit, probably like a four minute extension because of the, in the in between games, I took some yeah, time to talk, talk to Cameron. Yeah. So I'm probably going to give a little bit of extension on that. Once again, I said it last, and I'll say it again. Probably every stream, where we gave that extension because of the interferences and the 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 process in which this has to be completed. That there's enough time that goes down that where like you know things like that need to occur. Not that we think that the format needs that. No, I don't think the format needs to be upgraded at all. All right, so. Here we are. <laughs> oh boy, did that ominous not flip an orange? Oh, so the Grax survived. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said there was enough spot blacks for that to happen. That's interesting, though. It's Fred, all right, it looks like Fred just said scoop it up so then you go to the time, okay? Yeah. All right, I will check in with them for a moment. So I think Cameron went first in both games, so there's nothing to be understood from that. It, it, it basically just comes down to how effective the attacks have been and, and understanding how the Motormaster interacts with certain things. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks, Dan. Yeah, the other interesting thing with the end of time procedures is I think they're going to be even more relevant with the whole like getting to attack with all your characters and getting all those turns because with these types of decks, you're like I said, it's just one giant turn. So I think the game is I, I think the games are going to be decided at a logical conclusion because you're going to have all these extra quote unquote extra turns happening anyway. Right. Um. Because you get to be, you get to go tap, so you're tapped out, tapped out, and so like with all these new characters popping out, then they have to tap out, so you're gonna get like all your turns. So I don't think it's gonna be a big deal at all. Yeah. So I gave them the four minute extension there, so that clock on stream is gonna be live. So oh, did you fix it? Now? Yeah, I just added four minutes to it. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet new tool I found today. <laughs> there you go. Huh. 
so um, like you said, it'll be this. This will be the opportunity for Fred to go first. Um, and I'm, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that 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 has been the factor in either of these games. Um, no, Cameron went first in both games. Right. So, so I, I don't think that that's been a factor yet. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see if he decides to go first. Is he, wait, what is what is that? The Fort Max there. Oh, Judge, we're getting judged. Ah, okay. I'm coming. Do you understand? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold on one second, guys. Oh, you can hear me. Ha <laughs> ha. That's what it was. You're good. You can't hear me anymore. My bad. <laughs> okay, we're good. I thought he was about to go into Fort Max. I was like, what? <laughs> That's funny. Did I lose you there, Scott? Are you still here? I'm here. Oh, okay. Just chill. You got it real quiet. That's fine. No, I'm just playing my phone. There are... <laughs> I, I agree, Jempty. There are going to be some long final turns in, in quotation marks. Yeah, the, the end of match procedures. are going to go long, yeah. It's going to be weird. So uh, he should just swing with the plane into the plane as usual. Yep. Yeah, I don't think they're... I'm looking over their list again. I don't know if there's anything I would have changed just because of time procedure either because I think there's enough time to officially play this game out, to be honest, uh, that, you know, it'll definitely be in a position where we know that someone is going to be able to win the game, I believe, yes. in, these, in this time limit. Yeah, I agree. So what did we get hit for? Big old six on the bull. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. I, I, it's, it's hard to say. Um, I, I understand why he's doing it because like he's never gonna get to that bull again. So like he's now just making it easier for himself later when he could potentially be down to like a small attacker into the bull. So he's just trying to, to shorten it. Um, but I know Fred's like Fred's damage difference is a little bit different than normal than some of the other decks where he has kind of a limit. So maybe that's where I'm worried about it. But you change what Cameron's plays are. If you attack your plane into their plane, if 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 if, if he is in KO range, right? He like, can just like if he back. takes right. right, like so you, like if you get two attacks on the plane, right, and before the tank is exposed, which it, I think it is works. it's fine. I think you just swing the tank and then like once again, I don't know that I don't know that Fred's capable of KOing the tank, you know, with his tank either. So like I, I think it like. I understand where you're going at it, but just because of the mm -hmm. way Fred's lineup is, I don't know that he could efficiently deal 10 damage anyway. With the card plays, I think he can. Just not, like, straight damage, but I think with card plays, he can. I have no idea. I assume that's a fusion board, right? Yeah, I'm assuming so. Good catch on that chat. I got you. 1-1. One, one. Haha. That's a lot of peers. Oh, okay. All I know is it's a lot of peers. <laughs> I, yeah, the, the the proxies make it hard. So eight. It looks like eight to me. Yeah, it looks like eight to me. Okay. So there you go. He's easily within horrible range. Oh yeah, he's he's he has to attack with the tank here, or else I think it's bad. Well, he's not within horrible range because of the motor master. Oh, that's right. That's right. You got me. But he's so. But I still think you attack with a tank here anyway. But this really hurts his point position. Well, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't affect his point position plays all that much. As long as he's at eight or less, point position is still a really good play here. But um, we'll see what happens. Um, looks like he's moving and die. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Cause delete. Oh, he went up to nine. So that actually does matter. Yeah, that's a bad play. This is going to be... I oh, so he came in and crashed his own guy to go 9, so this is the same thing. He's just going to move up damage over and, and KO him, right? Yeah, I don't understand this at all. Well, you're going to came in and crash. That's all good and dandy. Just came in and crash another guy. 
Yeah. So he's, got, he's probably going to pick up this hold the line again. I Or the spy rest. It's just ruse and hold the line to pick up there. So a couple options. So he pick up side is really no way has conjurals in hand, in my opinion, if he picks up uh, anything nope. else. Nothing going on. You can pick up anything? Thank you, Jempty. No, he's, he just picked the item. I, I saw him just swag off cards. Ten minutes left in the round, guys. Ten minutes. <laughs> like, I just, like, imagine myself, like, coming over the loudspeaker at school, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that turn was devastating for Fred. I, I see no way that he can... This is going to be really hard to win because of just like who he attacked with, where he attacked, how he played his cards. I, I don't. I think he's just leaving himself too vulnerable here. I mean, if we get in the time procedures, the damage currently is he's he's winning the damage race there. But I I definitely understand what you're saying there. But it's just as simple as flip, KO your guy. Yeah, so he plays the black pip, he deals the damage to Motomaster, and then he's going to flip and KO the Sky Shadow. Did we heal all the damage? What's going on? I, I don't know where all his damage went. <laughs> I'm confused. He's just cleaning up to make it a 10. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That's why I hate those stupid tokens. <sighs> All right, so there goes the flip. The worst part is he does the flip to, to go back to nine, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he goes. There's the cleanup. Unless he was going yeah, he, was, he, was at, he was at 11. He was oh, okay, 11. okay. That makes more sense. I was like, did he really just make the 10 to go back to nine? Like, come on. <laughs> so, I mean, the good thing here is the sky shadow is not exposed, but, like, I don't think that matters. We're in the same situation we've been in the whole, every other time. And the sky shadow is just going to get exposed to his own sky shadow, et cetera, so. Yep, yep, yep. It's well. It said it's at this point, you know, come winding down here with eight minutes. Like it, it's gonna be. It could turn into like who gets like the best big hit at this point in the match. So we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, I don't think that's gonna matter. I think it's already. Uh... I don't think it will either. I think we can potentially get this finish in time. Depends how how long the the plays take in the next several turns here. But it's gonna it's gonna come down to the wire for sure. If it comes down to damage, Cameron definitely wins because I don't even think I don't even think he's gonna his only I don't even know if he's gonna KO I don't even know if he's gonna turn in Sky Shadow here to be honest with you. Uh, oh, if he just attacks the plane, he will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Counter espionage. I wonder what he named. Maybe he knew that was his hand. Is that an upgrade? I, I have no <laughs> idea what that card is. I'm not sure either. I'm just gonna double check. Cameron, what was the card that you discarded? Counter espionage. Oh, so he just counter espionage your counter espionage? Yes. Uh, okay, just making sure. Thank you. Yeah. All right, there we go. Had to confirm. <laughs> yeah, this is like Fred's deck doesn't have a lot of um combat pumps and things like that. I think that's where like, Yeah, we were, we were saying earlier like his his damage has a it has a limit. Yeah, Cameron's deck is more sleek, more like streamlined. Like mm -hmm. it's just it's mm -hmm. just it has I've seen it somewhere before. <laughs> yeah. It has the cards that you want to use, you know, like so. I've heard good things about it from from other people as well. <laughs> mhm. Mm Fusion board. So maybe, I mean, if you can take out the tank here to do a lot of damage with the tank. That's, that's 11 bad. pierce 7 to start. So I hope he's going for the tank. But if he's going to just go for the plane, I think that's a mistake. It looks like he got to 10. So if he goes after the tank and gets pierce 10, it's, that's pretty good. 
But since we're yeah. counting for defense, I'm not sure that he did. Well, since he flipped four cards, he's gone for the tank. So. Right, right. Yeah, I think he got the Pierce 10. It looks like that second card is an orange black. Unless it's not, uh, okay, it's good. It's right, precision first. Yeah. He got there. I mean, even, even, even not, he was at, what, 8, 11. He, he, had enough, uh, he had enough pure attack power anyway, I think. I think he was at, like, 14 attack, which is really what, what, what the number actually mattered for. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Like we're over here counting blacks, so like, wait a minute, there's there's oranges on the table. <laughs> so now I assume Cameron swings in with the horrible. We're in the same situation we've been in. A lot, yeah. <laughs> and he has what? He has 14 hit points, right? The horrible? Yes. Uh, he's going to take one here, deal damage to the Motormaster. I, Wait. It's funny how like you're trying to like point through the internet, you know. Wait, did he deal a damage to Night Racer or no? I don't think he dealt damage anywhere. Okay. I don't know what's going. On. He might. I think he's deciding. I think he's deciding he's... who to fight for position before he gets to. Oh, like, that's fair. Triggers. That's fair. Let's just not forget the trigger because it is a, a. You have to do it. Good cards left. I unmuted him so I can hear him for a second. If I don't kill Sky Shadow this turn, in that depth, might be okay. In depth look into the mind of Cameron. <laughs> so I play Fight for Position. Yeah, I'll play Fight for Position, doing a damage too horrible. Um, to do a damage to Motormaster. I'll flip Horrible. So who do you want to, to fight move for a damage the bull or the um, to Sky Shadow. Okay. Okay. And... So the Horrible has the fight for position? I believe so, yes. Very right. bold to the cat. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bull. It's a bull. Let's see if we can kill. No, I guess he gave it on the sky shadow. I don't know what. The... Yeah, I guess he gave the sky shadow. Yeah, know. he did. Yeah. No, I guess he gave it. I don't. I don't know what who has. The... I was just making sure all the targets were under the right. Yeah. So in depth look in the cavern right there, guys. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of whites. So he... Oh yeah, the viper position. Yeah. I I can't tell what those cards are, so I don't know the icons. Uh, it doesn't look like a lot of damage, that's for sure. I assume he put the cards on icons of the same card, so I assume he put them on like rock targets yeah. and stuff that are orange blacks. So he went after the knight and did not KO it. Yeah, it's ten on it. Yeah. Tell. I don't know that the motormaster can. Can kick back here because I mean well, I'm out. Yeah, it has five damage, so he probably definitely can. Um, how much damage does he have to do the horrible? Five. So, you know, so he starts he, at four. Yeah, he, he, just, to... he just flips to go to four unless he doesn't flip. But I, I doubt that's that's not what he does because he has to protect that night racer at this point. All right, so it gives a secret action, which we assume is contrails as usual. Right. Well, he didn't take the hold the line earlier, so we know it's not that. Alright, so he gets Scoundrel's last turn. He's gonna go to the bold. <laughs> sure. I like it. Four bold one. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's gonna that's definitely gonna do it. That's a lot of damage. Is it eight? It's more. Oh it's ten. Yeah. Ten. Yeah, but see now it's like one minute left in the round, guys. So I mean, like, this could obviously be a weird one minute, set one, of plays. 
Yeah. Because, I mean, he, he can just crack in twice, and it'll probably end on his turn, and it'll just go down to that. So he just gets a one damage on him. It's going to swing. Yeah. Okay. Is he going in the Night Racer? Yeah. He's going in the Motor Master, my assumption. You're trying to do the most damage you can, right? Yeah, I guess it's fine. Alright, so... Scar unmute, unmute. That is time. That is time in round, guys. Uh, so just finish the turn out. Okay. The whole round out. So no reason. Okay. Then Sky Shadow with 12 into Sky Shadow. Uh, no, I don't think you do. Because I don't think they count as characters until one. they... Old. Two, Do you count two, the head health that's remaining? Seven, Twelve. Two, that's a good fourteen question. pierce know, two. But I don't think so. Fourteen minus two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'll take eight. Puts me in nineteen. Okay. Nineteen. So that's ten and nine. All right. So we're gonna go. The tiebreaker is gonna be health remaining in play. Yeah, so okay. I need to know. Uh, I believe there is zero damage on the Grax. Yes. So that's five. So I've got 12. I've got thirteen. Twelve, right? Um, seven plus five. Yeah, it's 12, five, twelve. Twelve. Okay. And then, Fred, you have five. I uh, have yeah. Five. Okay. So then the the match is going to be awarded to Cameron on tiebreakers. The game is okay. The, the game. The game ended. Good the match. match. That was <laughs> that was close. Good, game, Good match, guys. <laughs> Yeah. Really, really good game. Good game, guys. Right. Um, Thanks for the game, Fred. I'm going to check back in with you guys in one second, okay? Yep. All right, so we're going to... So we can hear if them talk. If you had minute, another guys. turn... As we talk um, I, I would have taken out your Sky Shadow, yes. Yeah, you would have taken out Sky Shadow. That was... like I think the fact that I missed killing your Sky Shadow, if you had another turn, would have cost me the game. And probably if I was yeah. thinking... All right, Scott, so let's... Uh... Let's wrap up the night a little bit, man. Um, what did you think about the games tonight? There was a lot of Sky Shadow. There was a lot of Sky Shadow. There's a lot of Sky Shadow in your bracket. <laughs> a lot of Sky Shadow. Yeah. Yes. Um, interesting game. I mean, we, we definitely saw the clear difference, like I said this in the earlier games, uh, of the difference between the Blaster 4-wide and then these 6-wide variant decks. Um, and, like, honestly, like, you could just tell immediately like the four wide blaster not having a titan and then just being ko'd like fairly quickly in the games like the games just ended so much faster but it also like it the the game one you thought fred was out of that game and he was still able to you know swing back and pull off the the game with some some really nice powerful plays yeah i think that i think the difference is um i think i think cameron's streamlined deck is what won him this match, because if you think about it logically, Fred technically has more characters. He also has a character that starts in play that directly counters a lot of what Cameron's trying to do. So, like, it would seem on paper that he would have the the upper hand, but because his deck is just, like, not as streamlined in terms of, like, what it's trying to do, and it's trying to go in a lot of different directions at once, that, like, every single play that Cameron plays was just, you know, going towards the same forward goal. Right. Um, and... Uh, on Fred's side, I just think there's just, there was just too much going on. Right. Um, that like he has to draw pretty perfectly. Uh, that that's what that's my opinion on that. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Relax, empty. I don't um, even think that mattered. It would have just been one more I, just one more draw, yeah, one more hard play. It, it might not have been anything at all in the end. Yeah. Um, but the uh, the real truth is that I think Fred with his point positions, uh, I think they were really. They, I don't think they they did anything for him in this matchup. Um, both times he just moved the damage over and KO'd the, the piece, so it didn't really help. Uh, so I think that was a, a big a big mistake on Fred's end, was kind of trying to rely on that point position when in the end it was just a bad upgrade for the play. For, yeah, for he, the time off that, he, he gave up too many turns doing that. Like, right, I, right. He made the same mistake twice, which... Right, right. I mean, obviously, like, we're, it's new cards and we're, like, you know thousands of miles away from each other um but yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. so uh, i'm gonna give it to that but um yeah the main thing is just understanding that like 
a lot of these cards deal damage in different ways that specifically say one thing versus another, so you just got to be careful with some of that stuff. I do think the win positions are very good. Um, I think I would probably, um, again, like, they would be something I would sideboard. Um, but I understand why he's playing them because of the cup, because he has all those Contrails main deck and stuff like that. So it, I there was a match yesterday that he played where they were, like, really, really game-winning because he, he never combined with more than 10 damage on him as a result of them. Right. And and they just always presented these, like, really annoying, like, situations for his opponents. So um, just forcing attacks to go where you don't want them to go. So Yeah, it makes sense to me. And and you did... That was against the... Uh, that was against Dark, right, where he had the Blaster with very limited uh, direct damage. So in that in that idea, it's, it's really good because, like, he doesn't even have any ways to interact... Uh, or get around the the motor master or anything like that. It really was the horrible flip that is what you know sealed those those wins. Yep, exactly. So, but all in all, it was a good night, Scott. Thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And, yeah it was um, like I said, guys, I don't know for sure when the next live stream is going to be. Uh, so it might just happen randomly one night because like that just might how it happens. <laughs> We're not planning it. Um, so if you guys are enjoying these and you want to hit that subscribe button to, to know when it happens, it's probably a good call. <laughs> but uh, all in all, good night, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out again, chat. You guys were awesome again. And uh, once again, thanks to everyone that played on stream tonight. Very appreciative of you guys coming out and playing in the tournament and, and having a good time with us. Um, but that's going to be it for us tonight. So good night, Scott. Good night, chat. Thanks, Dan.